Anyways, people, I really didn't think I'd be returning to this guy, the Calvine UFO. But I am. For some very complimentary reason, people contact me and tell me stuff. Just last week, I got an email that said, Glenn Sander. Excellent information. And just this weekend, an anonymous person, a viewer, I guess, email me two words again, an acronym, V-L-T-A-S and Calvin. Sorry, V-L-T-A, I have got a clue, really. So I looked it up. V-L-T-A-S, vacuum lighter than air structures using aerogel. Aha! Okay, stop. <laughs> Dr. David Clark's team and me have both been investigating from evidence what people tell us into what a Calvine UFO photograph, this one, might actually be. David Clark's team is doing brilliant work looking for the photographer, still hasn't turned up, and looking at the whole story of the Daily Record and the non-publication. But the team found or was contacted by somebody who had an idea what the device actually was, a military weapon. And from what he told them, the diamond device was a Gulf War, the invasion of Iraq, laser targeting drone, and the Harriers were US Air Force. Um, I got different information. I was contacted by an anonymous person who works for BAE Systems, that of course used to be British Aerospace at the time that the Calvine picture was taken. But what he told me was everybody in the canteen round the water cooler at Wharton, BAE Systems, found the whole Calvine thing incredibly amusing because they know what it was. It's, according to him, a radar targeting device faceted and the two Harriers belong to BAE because they built them and they use their two Harriers to test stuff. Now Wharton is almost on the border of Scotland it's only a hop skip and a jump in a Harrier within range to go up to the low level Perthshire above Calvine test range to do something. That makes a lot of sense to me because suddenly we have genuine Harriers that are within flight range that do exist where no others were on operational duty on that day, apparently. But stop, both David Clark's team and myself are missing the best bit of information. And that is this thing, the diamond shaped object. It does not have wings, it doesn't have a cockpit, it doesn't have any propulsion. So neither of us have any idea about the gorilla in the room. Harriers, yes. It's possible use, yes. But what is it? How does it fly? What's the propulsion? All of that is a complete... Ah, maybe it's no longer a mystery. So let's swap the potato for some science and talk about buoyancy. So we've often heard of balloons or deriggable airships being called lighter than air craft. Mm -hmm. That's because if you could have a gas inside such as hydrogen and helium which is lighter than our atmosphere, the atmosphere makes it buoyant. The upward buoyancy, actually you need to know what buoyancy is. So air or liquid gets more dense as it goes nearer the bottom. So the air pressure at sea level is denser than the air pressure up in the stratosphere. And that difference is buoyancy. So the air beneath an object is more dense and actually it's holding it up. And the air above it is less dense and producing effectively lift. So if the object is lighter than it's pulled by gravity towards the earth, it will rise, it will become buoyant. And the easiest way to do that is to fill an envelope, a balloon with hydrogen or helium, which is less dense than air. But there's a better way. And it's not a new idea. It probably goes right back to Leonardo da Vinci. A number of people have tried this, but it 
didn't work. So what's less dense than air? Hydrogen, helium, and no air. Yeah, a vacuum. Imagine you have a balloon and you suck all the air out of it. What's inside it is less dense than the air on the outside. And it will be buoyant. But it won't work, will it? Because the air pressure will crush the balloon flat like a pancake. And that was the problem. If you could encase a vacuum in a skin, that would stop it collapsing under air pressure and stopping air rushing in, you could make a vacuum balloon. And there's various patents going way back for vacuum balloons. But guess what? They don't work. The only way to do it would be to have a metal balloon, something to actually encase the vacuum, the evacuated chamber, which would be lighter than air, but the weight of the metal would be so heavy it wouldn't float. And that was why it never worked. To make it work, you'd have to have some material to contain a vacuum that's lighter than the weight of the material. Well, oh, let's go to Los Alamos Laboratory and look at this stuff. This stuff. This stuff. Ugh. <laughs> I don't have any. Aerogel. Aerogel is actually quite old. It's a way of extracting all the liquid out of a matrix of a jelly. So if you've got jello, boing, 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 and sucked all the water out of it, but kept the structure of the uh, pig bones. <laughs> You'd have this hollow, solid form, the shape of the jello, but with no liquid in it. Oh, you can do that, but it's incredibly fragile. <laughs> it has no structure. So along came, who am I going to say? Edward Teller. Oh, Edward Teller, one of my favourite demons who invented the hydrogen bomb. The hydrogen bomb needs to have tritium gas and other things inside it. It's two bombs. It's an atom bomb and it's a hydrogen bomb with a secondary explosion. And that's all controlled with a foam or a gel. Early hydrogen bombs actually used expanded polystyrene. That's why expanded polystyrene was invented. But more sophisticated hydrogen bombs use something called aerogel, developed by the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. But spool forward to a few years before the Second Gulf War. And that's the key point. The Los Alamos Laboratory invented an aerogel that can contain a vacuum. Oh, they invented VLTAS, Vacuum Lighter Than Air Structures very secretly. So how does an aerogel vacuum structure work and how does it make a flying object? Good question. I love answering these things for you. So you've got now a structurally strong type of aerogel that doesn't collapse under air pressure. Over it you put a very thin skin. It could just be cloth, it could just be mylar, it could be anything that you want. All you have to do is stop the air rushing in to fill the vacuum. It's not actually encasing the vacuum. The vacuum is now evacuated air in the structural aerogel. Here is the US patent for it. So it really does exist. And look at this in the patent. What's their preferred shape for a vacuum lighter than air vehicle? A Tic Tac. Uh, I don't think it's related. I don't really think the Tic Tac is a balloon. Honestly, it's not a balloon. But maybe a vacuum balloon structure actually explains what the weird potato they saw over the hillsides of Persia. Because nobody knows what the object actually is. We might know what it was used for. A radar reflector for laser weapon guidance. Very practical. Or a British Aerospace Stealth Skin Metamaterial Test Vehicle. Also likely, and possibly both. I think this is very interesting. Because what did the witnesses really see? Well, we assume that they saw the object hover above the ground. And then there's written reports of it shooting up woof, and disappearing at a fast speed. Those are two things that this advanced secret aerogel vacuum device can actually do. It's not manned. Inside is a gel and a vacuum pump. 
If you balance the amount of vacuum and the amount of atmosphere inside it, it becomes neutrally buoyant at any height you want. Ideal for a laser targeting or a radar cross-section device. If you then evacuate all the air out of it quickly, all it needs is a tiny vacuum pump, it shoots up in the air. Exactly what the witnesses claimed they saw. So is that the answer? I have no idea. I'm a goat farmer in France. People write to me. People tell me stuff. But it answers a couple of questions. Unmanned, no wings, no propulsion, a strange shape, and it's shooting up in the air. And it was secret. Could the Calvine object, whatever it was being used for, actually be a V-L-T-A-S? So thanks viewers for reaching out to me. Obviously, if you work in this type of field and you know your stuff, you can just point me in the direction for my research. James Warrow has helped on this. Lots of people have dug in to work out what aerogel and VLTASs are. Thank you, James. And maybe we're just one wee step closer to understanding what actually they saw in this famous photograph. Maybe because of you, the truth is now out there. Keep sending me unclassified stuff that you can share. This film was made possible by the support of my patrons. Thank you so much. Join today for advert-free early access films and access to all the raw research.